Okay, today we are. I'm going to go over how I treatment plan pterygoid implants, and I just use just. I want to share a couple of things I've learned over the years, and I would like to share my specific techniques, some things that I've I've discovered uh, that have been helpful for me. Okay, uh, so the the beginning I'm going to show you so. When we go into this axial view, you've got your lateral pterygoid, and then you can see the medial pterygoid and the pyramidal process here. Um, a lot of what I've learned for pterygoid implants have been, let's see, first with Dan Rosen, then with uh, and Smiler, and then with Ramsey Amin, um, and then this last tip I'll share with you as, that I learned from Simon O, oh, and also I learned a lot from Dan Holtzclaw's books. So thank you all for that. All right, so now this one tip that really helped put me over the top as far as consistency of placement, you'll see when we go in the axial view on the upper left here, you can see just as the hamulus right here, you'll, you'll see here's the medial pterygoid, and then you'll see the hamulus coming down, and it's going to end right on that green line. Okay, and that's the, we had drawn the panoramic curve earlier. So now I'm going to go over to, uh, let's see, okay, I'm going to go here to draw ellip ellipse, and I'm going to circle that. So now I can see this is where the hamulus is located. Okay, so now on the other side, we're going to look for the same thing and it looks like it ends right here also on the line so we'll take and we will circle that okay so now I've got both of those circled now I'm going to roll the 3D reconstruction back and you should be able to see that and you can you can see the hamulus here with the circle right at the tip. Okay, and then you can see the hamulus here with the ellipse right below it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to implant planning. I'm going to slide my line over to here. And I'm imagining the pterygoid implant going about here, just dodging the sinus. So I'm going to go to add implant. And I've already saved uh, a three, I believe this is a 3716. We'll just double check. Oh no, it's a 401, because I, normally I do a 40 on these. All right, so I'm going to right click, flip this. Now I'm going to tilt this in. Give it a slight reposition about here. And then, let's see. I'm going to slide up. And then we're going to grab the apex of the implant. Drag it right over to the pyramidal process there. All right, let's see. Okay, now we're going to slide over. Actually, I'm going to lean this back just a little. Okay. Now, now we're going to look through the axial slices. It looks like we are right in that pyramidal process. Now, for the patient's left side, I'm going to slide over here. Right there. We're going to add an implant. We're going to flip it. Tilt it in. And tilt it back. OK. And then we can come up on the axial view. I'm going to hold control. Say up. Oh, you don't have to hold control. That's in the other view. So. 
I'm going to slide that over just to be right in that pyramidal process. So now I'm going to slide through my axial views. Okay, and I am pretty happy with what I have there. Okay, so now we're going to look at this from the 3D reconstruction. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Sliding through. So this one I'm going to take a little more medial. Okay. All right. So now what I what I look at is when I slide my line down here. Actually, I'm just going to select axial over here. And you can see the left axial is on the green line or on the panoramic curve and the right is also on the panoramic curve so then I'm going to slide to the actual implant apex and I can see that the apex of these implants is is medial to the hamulus so in surgery you can palpate the hamulus, study your scan from this view and from the axial view and from the explorer view. So study the anatomy of where the entrance entrance point is going to be using you know, using the reference of the hamular notch or maybe a tooth that you extracted and then use the hamulus as a reference point for the the, tar the target line. So for me, when I was missing more pterygoids, I was aiming a little too lateral. But when Simon told, when Simon explained using the hamulus as a reference point, uh, now I study that before the surgery, and I've consistently been you know, getting good quality contact. I think yesterday I had about. 10 millimeters of solid bone um, in, in one of the pterygoids uh, that we placed the implant in. So I hope that's helpful to, to, uh, to someone. I'd love to hear any, any thoughts or feedback you have on planning or placing pterygoid implants just to help everyone be more consistent. And uh, have a great day. Thank you.